everyone, Tim the Collect Jurassic here with another Mattel Jurassic World toy unboxing. We're looking at some really cool stuff today. These are the new Jurassic World Legacy Collection play sets that are just hitting Target here in the U.S. We have the Velociraptor Containment Chaos set that I've been looking forward to so much. Comes with those awesome Jurassic Park workers from the first film, Muldoon Raptor, and also the uh, Raptor uh, actual like box too. So this is like a set that's a dream toy for me. Cannot wait to get that one open. We also have the Tyrannosaurus Rex Ambush Pack. This is, of course, from The Lost World. You have the Mercedes-Benz vehicle in there. We have a Bull Rex with a new sculpt on the head. You also have a new... Um, uh, Ian Malcolm figure too. So a couple surprises in that set too. Um, capturing, you know, those iconic scenes from the movie. Of course, the opening of Jurassic Park and then that uh, trailer attack in Lost World perfectly captured um, in these two toy sets. Um, so again, just really excited about these. Anything Legacy Collection I get excited about because I just love those classic movies, but anything Jurassic Park, of course, um, is, is going to do it for me. So let's go ahead and start with the set that I'm most excited about, this Velociraptor Containment Chaos set. You can see the packaging here is gorgeous. It even um, shows the, um, like the loading dock from the movie with the artwork on the actual um, outside of the, the carton and also shows the raptor box here, kind of um, split from the inside window and also on the outside. So they actually did some custom artwork for this one, which I think is really, really cool. Elsewhere, it's got the Legacy Collection logo, wraps around, the, the artwork kind of wraps around. You can see more views of the raptor paddock here, which is really cool. Then on the back, you can see that constructed um, containment box or cage, whatever you want to call it. Um, the two uh, workers, some of their modular accessories. We got Muldoon in here. Um, and then the scan scan code as well, which we'll look at. Hopefully if I can remember that and once we get to figure out. And then also glow in the dark eyes. Hello. Pretty cool. Um, a, a first for uh, Mattel Jurassic for sure. So let's go ahead and bust this thing open. I did want to shout out to my buddy Josh in Australia who actually sent me one of these from Australia where they first showed up um, and I received it as they were showing up here in the US. So, but you know what? You can never have enough workers. So um, no regrets. I'm, I'm planning on collecting a bunch of these guys. So it all worked out. But let's go ahead and slide this tray out. You can see everything stays in the tray. We also have the Raptor box itself looking good there. And then we also have some instructions which we may or may not be using. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put the box aside. Um, we'll go ahead and take this tray out. Actually, you know what, the tray is, um, this looks like it's sealed in here, but I do wanna pop this out so we can look at this background. Because how nice is this background here? Check this out. How cool is that? I mean, that's like a bonus in and of itself back here. Hold on, we're still, still attached here on the bottom. Mattel likes their packaging a lot. Um, take a look at this. This is the background of the box itself. This nice jungle scene with the raptor cage. I mean, that's really cool. Um, almost, I, mean, I don't know, maybe worth keeping, am I right? Um, this nice little background looks really cool. Um, but enough, enough about the packaging. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get the toys out. Um, we have, first off, we have a piece of the uh, raptor containment vessel that we will professionally put on here in a second. It's got nice striped stickers on it on both sides um, and the whole thing builds itself. And then we have a couple of figures in here. Um, let's go ahead and bust out Robert Muldoon first because he's probably the least exciting thing in here. Muldoon himself is a repeat of the Legacy Collection. Robert Muldoon that came out all the way in 2018. So five-year-old figure, no improvements here. Virtually no different from that 2018 figure. Still can't really hold his shotgun in a way that makes sense um just because of the limited articulation i mean this is not hammond collection this is legacy collection so you have the base knee you know knee hip uh waist arm shoulder elbow but nothing on the wrists you know no, nothing on the feet or anything like that that's going to give you added articulation head articulates too but the likeness is pretty bad too kind of looks like a sad melting Robert Muldoon um you know so this this definitely isn't the definitive version of the three and three quarter figure that of course uh goes to the Hammond collection figure same size and everything just a um just a, a superior figure in every way you can see the articulation and likeness and all that and the, even the coloration of the movie accurate outfit is way better on the Hammond collection so you get it with this one 
Um, you know, not the most exciting figure in the world, but um, at least you get these other cool pieces too, because yeah, Muldoon is definitely probably the low point of this set. Um, but the high point for me are these workers, which will bust out. There's two different ones that look different. You know, they're not repaints or anything like that. They're separately sculpted, different likenesses on them. So here you go. You got the two workers here. They have the iconic orange hard hat with the Jurassic Park logo on it. They also have Jurassic Park on their shoulders, which is awesome. Just the right shoulder, it looks like. And then the body itself is pretty low on paint, but um, that's not too surprising because you have these accessories we're going to put on them. They're going to add a little bit of color. Plus, in the movie, they're wearing these gray jumpsuits, which are pretty plain. So you can see a bunch of pockets and, you know, wrinkles in the clothing. So pretty pretty well sculpted figure again from here they look pretty basic they have painted heads painted hands but once we get the accessories on you really start to see them kind of bulk up and, and look a little bit more um com complex like their movie counterparts so um those accessories i'm not just talking about like weapons and stuff i'm talking about they have these cool um like tactical vests even so these pop up you can see they have like a little um, fasteners in the back and these will actually go on the workers which is fun so you can literally just pop those on um so i think yeah they literally just pop on sort of like you would uh, a real piece piece of clothing they have little like button clasps that shut tight really tight there and now he's got his ballistic vest on so he's already looking a little more heavy duty a little more ready to deal with velociraptors right um this guy's got the same vest but i'm going to leave his vest off just so i can show some of the variation that you can do i mean you're already getting um kind of different looking workers right and then we also have the cattle prod which is a classic from that opening scene you get one of them with this set so we'll go ahead and give it to um vest guy since he looks like he's ready to ready to take on some raptors and then we also have hold on there's more we also have a flashlight gotta have a flashlight when you're looking for raptors and trying to keep the light <laughs> on the uh, raptor containment vessel as they load it in so he gets a little flashlight um, and he also is going to have we got some walkie talkies here two little tiny walkie talkies they're very detailed though they even have like a little window on them so there's two walkie talkies um they actually have a spot for the walkie talkies to slide into the back of the tactical vest which i think is just really really cool i don't know how movie accurate that is but i like the way it looks on him he already looks more official i actually gotta put it the other way so the antenna yeah there we go so he's looking like he's definitely ready to deal with some raptors um we'll go ahead and give this guy the other walkie talkie he can hold it in his other hand, right? So he'll just pop that in his hand. Their hands hold things and he's ready. He's calling in to, to Hammond to say they're ready to load the Raptor in. And then the last two accessories we have are two knee pads, which I think are cool. Cause again, you can just do lots of variation um, amongst those knee pads. So they just pop onto his legs really, really slick and really easily um and then he's got knee pads on so you can also give them to the other guy if you want in fact that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and give it to this guy sorry buddy um so yeah go ahead and pop those on yep there we go and now you have a super heavy duty park worker ready to prod and then this guy with the flashlight and the walkie talkie but i could put a tactical vest on him even and make him look a little more heavy duty too so park workers for me are the highlight of this set alongside the raptor vessel which we'll get to right now um it comes disassembled we also have the raptor too which we'll take a look at I'll go ahead and make myself some room here um, to work with let's build this raptor containment vessel real quick um, it comes like i said unassembled in this flat plastic bag um, but it also has a lot of different detail on it both in the sculpt and uh in the uh, stickers too you can see this is the bottom of it it's got that like um, textured metal i mean just those that's inside the containment vessel that you would never even see unless you looked in there so they really thought of all the details um, to make this thing movie accurate. And I love how they added like these slots for, oops, 
for light to filter in. I mean, this is literally just like the movie. It's so cool. And let me get these other two open. Sorry, I'm just gonna rip them open off camera because it's easier. Um, then we can start building this this thing. So you can see they have letters on the B and A, and those correspond to these walls themselves. So we'll go ahead and snap B to B, and that will just pop on. And then we'll put A to A over here. See this this piece has a has an A on it up there. And that goes to A on this thing. So um, they made it pretty straightforward. You can follow the instructions too, but um, otherwise that you just match the letters with what piece that goes in. And you have to build it in order. That's, that's an important thing too. You have to put these roof pieces on first. And then I think we put this piece on the calf end. I'm telling you, when this thing comes together, it looks incredible. For being, for coming in five pieces, um, it really pops together in a way that looks great. Um, go ahead and pop this end on for both pieces. So it just it's like a cap almost that caps off the entire cage. There's no getting out for the Raptor on this side. And then we're going to go ahead and put it on this cool textured platform that I already sort of showed off. And it should just... It's got a lot of different tabs, but yeah, it literally just pops on. And then last but not least, we have the door you got to have the door because that's what they raised in the movie and there you go that's the raptor containment vessel it looks awesome it's a solid little piece of plastic even for coming disassembled it assembles into something really really cool it's got the ladder on the back of it again it's got that light on the inside and then it also has the door that opens up so that opens up and stops or you can push it down and shut it but it looks really cool the workers scaled next to it basically perfectly I mean, they look, I mean, the, the cage is huge in the movie, so it's pretty large here in toy form, too. Got Muldoon over here. So it scales really well. And, of course, the Raptor's going to go inside of it. Let's take a, take a look at this Velociraptor real quick. Um, it's nothing too crazy, but it does have an all-new paint coloration we haven't seen on a Jurassic Park Raptor um, from Mattel. I love the subtle striping um, on the tail there. It's got the DNA scan code in the back there. There you go. If anyone's looking for that, it pops right back in. It's got um, posable legs, posable head that goes back and forth, up and down and around. Love that ball joint. It's got jaws that open. So you can see the jaws open. And then it's got arms that go too. So you can do all kinds of cool, crazy attacks with this raptor. And I just love how it's a little bit different than some of the other raptors we have. Most recently, we had the Risky risky Rescue Raptor that came with Ellie Sattler. So you can see um, how similar, but how different they are. Both have green tones. But, um, you know, this, this new one that comes with the containment set has those really cool stripes on the outside. Another thing that's really cool is that this guy um, has glow-in-the-dark eyes, too, which I think if we charge it up on one of my lights and turn the lights off, should be able to check that out. So let me go charge it um, under a light, and then we'll take a look at it with the lights off and low light. Okay, hopefully this is uh, charged enough that you can see the, the eye glowing a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's kind of, it might be hard to see on the camera because the camera doesn't do great at low light, but you can see the eye does have a little bit of glow to it. It's a little bit more impressive when you have the lights completely turned off, but my camera simply won't pick up um, pick up the eye at all when I have the lights completely turned off, but um, believe that in person. It's a little bit brighter than what I'm showing on camera. And again, a kind of a fun little gimmick um, that we haven't seen before with the Mattel Jurassic toy. So that's, that's the glow in the dark eyes. Now that we got the lights on, I think we can go ahead and just show one last thing, which is the Raptor um, and how it fits in the box. Um, pretty pretty simple, as you'd imagine. It literally just goes inside and it fits really well. I don't even think you need to poke the tail through anything. Um, we'll go ahead and shut his mouth. Um, he fits in just fine, shut the door. And then you got um, the Raptor in there, just like the movie. You can kind of see his silhouette in there, which is cool. Um, with the light kind of hitting him and siphoning through those grates, just like the movie. 
um, and the door opens just like the movie. So um, just a really cool set that perfectly recreates that movie scene. Um, love the park workers, love all the different um, sort of configurations you can do with the vests and the knee pads and the different accessories. I mean, my plan is to get a bunch of these guys and you can do pretty much, you know, 10 different configurations if you think about it if you think about holding a walkie-talkie holding a light holding a prod having a vest on all those different things you get all those different variations that you can do so those are really cool obviously robert muldoon leaves a little bit to be desired in this set but everything else is perfect but let's go ahead and take a look at the tyrannosaurus rex ambush pack here without knocking the toy i just opened off the table hopefully um, but the Legacy Collection set here um, has a little bit different artwork than what we saw in that other box. It does have this large, like, Dominion T-Rex on it, which is kind of random. But I guess it's a T-Rex in the box. Um, it would have been cool if they did something more Lost World specific here, like they did on that uh, Velociraptor containment set. But alas... Um, that can't be perfect, but it look, does look like it has a custom background in there with the rain and stuff. So we'll take a look at that once we open the box. But other than that, um, you ha again, you have the, um, I keep thinking I'm going to knock these guys off. Sorry, everybody. I got to move those toys back. And the worker falls over anyway. Go figure. Um, there we go. Now I can get this thing a little more front and centered. So, um, a nice display of the, the bull Rex inside. Of course, uh, Malcolm and the... Ben's looking pretty cool, but definitely going to look nicer out of the box, right? So around the back here, we have a view of that Ben's. Uh, I guess it's the ML320. I should know that. Malcolm running away shows how the dome opens on top. Uh, you can remove the back piece, which we'll take a look at. And of course, that scan code. So that's all on the back showing the toy that's inside. Let's go ahead and open her up and get out the toy itself. I think this one has a lot more packaging to get through than the, the Raptor set we just opened. So bear with me and I'll try to make this quick. I'm gonna have to destroy that box though. I'm just gonna get around that. Pull this out. Kind of get a better look at everything inside, right? Uh, including the T-Rex here and the uh, I keep wanting to call him Malcolm, but it's Muldoon. Or I keep wanting to call him Muldoon, but it's Malcolm. Um, lots of different twisty ties in the bottom. So go ahead and I hate these things. They they never go in the direction that you think they should go in to get the toy out. But this time it looks like I might just get lucky. Maybe. Yep. Okay. So the vehicle should be popping out here pretty perfectly. And then we also have Rexy to get out. Should just, you should just twist one way. Yep. Just said it. That's probably the smoothest I've ever had them come out. It does look like we have a couple of plastic ties to cut up here as well to get Rex out. Ooh, there's Rex out. Looking good. Cool. We'll go ahead and pop the tail out too. Last but not least, we have Ian Malcolm. Not Muldoon. Popping him out. Let's see if I can. He's got another plastic tie on him. All right. Easy. That's that's it for um, unpackaging things for this review. So now we can actually just focus on looking at the toys. We'll go ahead and pop the Bull Rex's um, uh, his tail on there and get it situated the right way. Um. Awesome, so cool. I'm already in love with that, Rex, that's cool. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at everything. We'll go ahead and start off with Ian Malcolm here. This is the Lost World Ian Malcolm. That's why he's got a little bit different of an outfit on and a little bit different look to him altogether. Um, Legacy Collection figure again, so pretty basic articulation with the knees and the, the hips and the waist, the arms. All that good stuff, the head. But honestly, for a Legacy Collection figure, the likeness looks great. Um, it definitely has a lot more detail. He's a little bit of stubble too, which looks really nice. Um, so, I mean, and it's got like a belt buckle painted on it. So it's actually not a bad, um, not a bad look at him. Um, it, it was, is this our fifth Malcolm figure? I can do a quick comparison. Starting off all the way with the first Legacy Collection Malcolm we got. Um, all the way back in 2018. So you can see just how much better the likeness looks from that one. Um, moving on, we have the first 
Hammond Collection version. So this is probably the best Malcolm figure we have. Definitely looks like Jeff Goldblum, um, he, as he did in Jurassic Park 93. So pretty similar levels of detail there. Um, objectively, what you think of the likeness, that just depends. Um, and then we also have the next Hammond Collection, which is the shirtless uh, Chaos Theory uh, exclusive from Mattel Creation. So the broken leg and the open shirt. So you get an idea there. I mean, I, I would think this one still wins in terms of likeness. Then last but not least, we have the 93 Classic, one of my favorites. This one, the head looks just like more or less um, sort of the Hammond Collection version with maybe a couple of different tweaks to the sunglasses. But all in all, that's a lot of Malcolms that Mattel has given us. Um, and of course, those first few are all meant to span Jurassic Park, but this is the first one that we get that's truly um, Lost World. So tons of Malcolms. Um, this new Legacy Collection is just the latest, greatest Ian Malcolm, but he's cool. I mean, he's got... A great motion on them, great detail, all that stuff. So pretty fun to get a, a new a new human figure. I use that phrase um, sparingly. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the Benz itself because that's pretty cool too. Um, it does it does look like I have a couple more things to snip off of it to get it completely out of the box. Starting with this dome back here. Um, looks like I had some ties on it to keep it in place. So we'll just cut those off very carefully. Easy. Okay, so that dome should be, yeah, see this dome on top opens up. Then we also have these window pieces, the doors rather, that are held on by the zip tie. So if we just pull that out, boom, comes right out. Do it on the other side here. Um, some of these are really tight though. Ooh. Let's see if I can cut that out without, ah, there we go. Easy, all right, another zip tie gone so now we can look at this thing in all of its glory this is such a cool vehicle such a i mean mattel's gotten really good at doing vehicles Oop, looks like i still got a piece on the bottom um and this benz is just kind of the latest and greatest one they've done it definitely has all the nice details you'd want to see that camouflage from the lost world movie it's even got the mercedes benz logo on the front does not have a working winch it is sculpted but you know Probably for cost reasons, they can only go so crazy with that kind of stuff. It's got these separately molded plastic, um, like, grating on all the doors, which is fun. Um, it's got even got a glass top like the movie. It's got all the lights up here like the movie. It looks really cool. And the doors, um, the front two doors open up so you can actually get someone in there. Looks like the steering wheel even rotates naturally. Of course, it's going to rotate. So it's even got cup holders in there. It's got everything. Look at that shift a gear shift all that stuff then this door on the other side opens as well so you can see inside there so um i love the hubcaps too are looking really nice um and then it's got this observation dome which was in the movie they just never used it a figure can eat there's even a little peg for a figure in there they can stand up so now can, can actually go in there and look at dinosaurs from the safety of the, the bubble i guess um and then this whole back part actually pops off too because there is a version of the vehicle in the movie that didn't even have that on the back. So you can get kind of both versions of the Benz if you buy two of these sets. You'll get, you'll get two, which is cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is this thing looks, looks really, really nice. It's a nice little solid tight toy. I do want to do a quick comparison between it and um, a couple of the other excellent Mattel vehicles we've gotten at this point. So we got the new Benz. Um, we also, from Lost World, have the uh, Hunter's Jeeps. These are very similar in sort of, like, length and all that stuff. So pretty similarly sized vehicles here. Um, but, yeah, we already have two vehicles just from the Lost World a couple years ago. I would have never thought that was possible. Of course, we have the classic Ford Explorer here. Again, um, pretty, pretty comparable in size to this vehicle, equal in length and width and all that. So... Another excellent Mattel vehicle. Then, of course, we have the Jeep Wrangler, which was one of the first ones they did. This one doesn't have a spare tire, so it is going to feel... Uh, let me make sure these guys don't roll off the back here. It is a little bit um, shorter than this new Benz, um, but um, it still gets... I mean, there's lots of different Jeeps they've done so far, so some of the ones with the spare tire are going to be a little bit 
bigger, but I mean, yeah, look at this motor pool, everybody. I mean, this is crazy that in the few short years Mattel has had the toy license, they've got, they've got some incredible toys. I mean, look at this. This is awesome. We got the Jeep, the Ford Explorer, um, the Hunter's, um, you know, vehicle. And we also have this Benz. It's so cool that they did all of these vehicles um, that, you know, can fit action figures and have play features and all that fun stuff. Um, it's just awesome that, um, that we've got so many cool toys. I mean, I loved collecting Kenner and Hasbro stuff, but they never got this close um, to kind of these world building toys, which I think um, is really what makes Mattel's take on the toys so special. So last but not least, let's go ahead and look at the Buck T-Rex here. Um, a basic figure. It's not going to be like Hammond Collection. It's not going to have a bunch of crazy articulation um, and certainly not a crazy amount of paint. If you're looking at this thing like I am. You're noticing that it literally just has those sort of signature bull Rex light stripes just on the back right here, just right here above the shoulders. They should go all the way down the tail. They should go up to the head even, but um, sorry, this is not, this is not that T-Rex. Um, doesn't even have its claws painted which really you know shows it um makes it look a little on the simpler side that simple paint job up there and then the no painting claws but at least the head is a new head this is a new um sculpt for bull rex um it's different than the other t-rexes they've done previously and i'll do a comparison here in a second but you can see here just really around the eyes and like the jowls kind of how this rex looks different than um the other versions we've gotten so far so that's Bull Rex um, getting its close up. As far as action features goes, it does have the button on top of its head, like the Extreme Chompin' T Rex, that lets it open its mouth. Oh wow! So its its mouth can also open on, I guess, both sides. It does a, a, a low chomp, and then you can also lift this up. And my my particular one wants to get stuck like that. So I don't know if they're all like that, but the one I just opened definitely likes to get stuck. Um, and then we also have the scan code, which is hidden in the back right there. Pop that up, Ooh, big scan code, pretty large, um, right on the back there and then that pops up. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't really go about the articulation, but it does have a jointed neck, just a one joint that lets it move around. They fuse this other joint probably for the action feature, but it does let him, and this is a boy, it does let it rotate like that too, which is pretty cool. Um, so it can kind of look sideways and left and right. Also has the legs that should, <laughs> should there you go, should pose. So um, they click up and down so he can, you know, get into like a, uh, sorry, a roaring thing too so or you can roar high all that good stuff um and then the tail of course is on a ball joint too so it rotates all around too um and this is you know kind of the the final lost world t-rex we've been waiting for all the way back in 2019 we got our one of our first legacy collection packs from lost world that had the dough in it so now we have the dough and the buck you can see here whoa my benz is driving away you can see here that they have almost the exact same, they do have the exact same uh, sculpt from the tail to the neck. It's the exact same figure, same posture, same everything. There's literally no difference. They didn't re-sculpt the body for the bulk, but the head is the real difference. You can see here that doe kind of has that classic Mattel Rex head and the bull has like a bunch of wrinkles around its eyes. Its bottom jaw is significantly bigger. The way the jaw kind of nests into one another, into itself, is a little bit more pronounced. So overall, just a little bit bulkier and meaty. So they both have the same roar feature. But yeah, now we have both uh, Rexes from Lost World, which is cool. Because then when you take, you know, this Benz vehicle, you can totally recreate the Eddie Carr scene where, you know, he's stuck trying to pull the trailer up and now he's getting attacked on both directions from the doe and the bull rex. You can actually make that whole scene happen if you collected that doe from before, which is really cool. Um, again, just perfectly recreates that that famous movie scene from the second film. So um, that is the Transfers Rex Ambush set in all of its glory. The Benz is definitely my favorite of that, but the Buck Rex is pretty cool as well. Um, just wish it had a little more paint. And then of course the Velociraptor containment set 
my favorite of the two just because we do get um these awesome park workers and this cool raptor box i mean these are just both of these are just really really cool releases from for the legacy collection just capturing those movie scenes because that is what these toys are all about are those jurassic movies so why not make toys that perfectly recreate things we see in the movie not just dinosaurs but humans vehicles cool play sets like this raptor bo um, containment box just awesome stuff i love this stuff um, and i hope you like taking a look at it too i have tons of these reviews for new mattel jurassic toys and other jurassic items on my channel so be sure to subscribe so you can check those out but i think that's all i got about these particular toys again i'm tim with collect jurassic thanks for watching and i'll see you next time